Sixth generation controls. You know, it seems like we were just talking about fifth generation controls, and here we are up to sixth generation controls. So, what we're showing you here on page 96 is we're showing you the fourth, fifth, and sixth generation service TCMs that Allison still makes available. Whether you're working on a GM, GMC truck, or a bigger truck with a bigger Allison 2000 series unit in. And uh, just so you know, this covers not only the 1 and 2000s, but it will also extend into 3 and 4000 series. For those of you that are working on the big guys, it will also go to the B series bus units as well as T series over, over, over highway uh, series. So this is pretty much spread across the whole uh, uh, usual Allison run. Sixth generation services, I mean, uh, TCM service, uh, is, uh, you have the part number there for it. It tells you on the right-hand side what TCMs are serviced. We also do the same thing with the A63, uh, fifth generation TCM, as well as the A6C, fifth generation uh, part numbers and TCMs it uh, replaces. And at the bottom, the old A59 for your fourth generation uh, along with the part number and the TCMs that it replaced and still co and covers as a service TCM. Uh, what's the reason for this? <clears throat> Basically, uh, it's for cybersecurity. That's what it's all about. In addition to uh, many enhancements as far as the software to operate the transmission goes, as well as some hardware changes that took place, but primarily it's to have to do with to prevent hacking. It's cybersecurity. Now, what you're going to see here is you're going to see uh, some rather sophisticated uh, ways of doing things now because this basically changes the entire uh, way you're going to uh, scan this, get into certain areas of the computer, and if you're Allison certified and doing uh, reflash, uh, that as well. So we show you some of the reasons for what's going on here with sixth generation. One is the prevention of unauthorized software installation. In other words, Allison don't want somebody else's stuff in their computers. I mean, it's not like an Android phone where you can use this guy's program or that guy's app or who knows what. You know, it's kind of like iPhone where you use only their stuff and that's it. Prevention of use of unauthorized programming equipment. In other words, uh, no want no funny stuff when it comes to actually changing the programming in their TCMs. So they're going to ensure against that. The prevention of unauthorized on-vehicle messaging from impacting vehicle operation. In other words, they don't want any radical changes on the way engineering designed this particular unit to work, plain and simple. And like all OEs, especially when it comes to us in the aftermarket, they want to protect Allison intellectual property. So those are your main reasons for what you're about to see here. Now, the reason for the change, it's to support functional safety compliance regulations imposed by yours truly, the U.S. government. So they want certain things to work according to their rules, and that is one of the reasons for this sixth generation change to comply with those. They want to improve cybersecurity to prevent hacking. And that all happened a while ago with those two guys that hacked that Jeep and started this whole thing. They want to add CAN-FD, uh, communications capability. What that is, what is CAN-FD? When you're going to add all these bells and whistles, and you're going to put all this extra stuff uh, as far as operational software and, and uh, programs, you need more computing power. Um, when CAN-FD can handle far more intercommunication between modules, including the addition of more modules, than previous CAN systems would be able to. 
Uh, KNFD has been around. Mercedes has been using it for probably close to six years now. Uh, of course, you know, uh, I'll just tell you a quickie. We had an Autel scan tool hooked up to a Benz, and, you know, when you first crank it up, one of the things you have a choice to do is to check what all the modules are in the vehicle. Well, we're sitting there looking at the scan tool. Uh, we could have had lunch. It had uh, finally, by the time it was done, it listed 62 modules in that car. So the idea of CAN-FD is to be able to handle, uh, uh, you know, simply speaking, more stuff. Parts affected. Obviously, the transmission control module has to be able to handle all this uh, additional uh, software as well as CAN-FD. Uh, the output speed sensor is now changed to a two-wire Hall effect sensor. The input and engine RPM sensors will remain a variable reluctance. In other words, they're still an AC generator like they always were. But the output is now a Hall effect. Online authentic authentication. They, they want you to verify or authenticate everything you're going to do in order to be able to change things or access things through your scan tool. So now, you can do it two ways. You can do it online. You can do it offline. If you do it offline, you're going to have to get a hold of a USB dongle. You're going to have to buy it from Allison uh, for the purpose of secure programming. So, in addition to authent authentication, uh, you will also have to verify that you're not a hacker, even if you can do it offline, to get the dongle to work. So now, it also includes new or modified diagnostic trouble codes. Now, this you have on page 97. We're showing you the 5th gen TCM. We're showing you the 6th gen TCM. The only way you're going to be able to tell a 6th gen, just looking at it, from a 5th is by this raised area you see here. This little hump, that's it. Otherwise, they look identical. It even has the same 80-pin connector configuration. So you're not going to be able to tell from that. That's the only way is to look for that raised area on the case of the TCM itself. Now, this you have on page 98, and on 96, we give you the part number for both speed sensors, both the new Hall Effect output speed sensor and the uh, variable reluctance input speed sensor. The part number's on page 96. We're showing this to you on page 97. Now, through the uh, grace of Allison Engineering, look what they did here. They made the connector for the new sensor narrower. So this was the old style, and the uh, and the output speed sensor used to be like that when it was an AC generator. See what they did here? They made it narrow, so there will be no cross connecting here. Thank you very much. So that's how you'll know right away that this is the new Hall effect type, and it is a two wire. Okay, now. This is going to be info only. This is not in your book. I want to show you what you're up against. I don't care what scan tool you're using. This is what you're going to have to do. Uh, I happen to be using our Allison Doc program, and this is the 2021 version. Uh, they change it. They change it pretty often. I mean, this came out in December of 21. I, they, by, for all I know, they could have come out with an updated version by now. They seem to be doing this uh, fairly often. But anyway, be this as it may. Uh, there are some things you're going to need to know here. One is this. If you're online, this is what you'll be looking at when you try to get into a TCM. It's going to want a security verification. In other words, if you want to get into this, it's going to ask you if you're going to have internet access during the sixth generation TCM reprogram or action requests. So, yeah, we're saying yes. So, the question is, what are, what are action requests? Well, the first thing you need to know is 
for your scan tool to be able to communicate with this in a way you're used to, you have to set up credentials, or what Allison calls certificates. Now, I don't know if any of you have come across a Chrysler product with the uh, new secured uh, gateway module, where all your scan tool is, unless you uh, authorize it, is a read-only type of device. You get codes, period, not much else. So this is what that's going to be like. So just like with a Chrysler product, you have to register your scan tool with Auto Authority, pay money, and by the time you're all over and done with, you register the scan tool to you, to shop, whoever it is, and now you can go ahead and get into a Chrysler product and do whatever you want to do. Well, this is exactly like that, a little bit different in, in application, but the idea is the same. So it's asking me, do I want to reprogram? Do I want action requests? Well, if the answer is yes, as you see it is, first thing I got to do is I got to come up with a username. I got to come up with a password. At that point, if it likes my password, and you know how passwords can be touchy sometimes, you know, sometimes they want capital letter, they want small letters, they want a number, and they want a, a, some kind of a, a, a sign of some kind, an asterisk or something. Uh, in other words, it has to be alphanumeric. At that point, if it's accepted, you click OK, and in you go. Now, this is online. Supposing you want to do it offline. Now, remember, if you're doing it like this, you need to have a secure internet connection. You know, I know you've got a dedicated scan tool that you do for this kind of stuff because you have to do it for all your, uh, even if, you, if you're using, uh, you're doing other programming for other vehicles, other makes, um, you already have that established. You know what not to have running, what to have running, so on and so forth. Um, so here again, this is what we're doing and we need a secure internet connection. Now, offline. You got to get a dongle you know, from from Allison. It will contain all the software and such that you need to do whatever you want to do with this. And at that point, it's asking me if I'm going to have an internet connection. I said no, because I'm not going online. I have the dongle. I'm going to plug that into my USB port, uh, port in my computer. But I have to establish a PIN number. So you're going to have to come up with a PIN. Once you do that and you click OK, if it if the, accepts the PIN, then you're in. That's pretty good. Accept the PIN, you're in. OK. Next. All right. Now, action requests. One of the questions it asks, in addition to programming, do I want action requests? Well, do I want my scan tool to be a read-only device? In other words, all I could do is maybe retrieve codes. I can't do anything else. I can't look at data. I can't do resets of one kind or another. Uh, where's my, you know, bidirectional controls and such, stuff like that? Well, here's what that's all about. Obviously, I said yes because I want to. So in my doc program, yours, your scan tool, obviously, will be a little bit different, but you get the idea. Action requests, I pull that menu down. This is where my clutch test is, solenoid test, my shift adapt resets. Uh, this is where my uh, warning lamp uh, checks are, uh, etc. Output tests, in other words, anything else I want to control bidirectionally is done through action request here, which I can't do unless I have uh, authentication of everything you've seen previous here. I've gone through all, jumped through all the hoops, let's say. Okay, so now what exactly do I, do I need for uh, authentication? Well, if I want to do a clutch test or a solenoid test, yeah, I need it. If I want to reset my shift adapts, no, I don't need it. I want to do anything about throttle resets, yeah, I need it. Any lamp tests, yes, I need it. Uh, do I need to set some minor items like my oil level sensor? No, I don't need it. Uh, my oil life monitor? No, I don't need it for that. My other output test, my bi-directional control? Absolutely, I need it. So that's why your scan tool without 
authentication would be so limited it would be useless. That's why we have to go through all of this uh, nonsense. So, like I want to do my clutch test that's offered here. If I authenticated, yes, I can do it. If I didn't get the okay, no, I can't do it. I want to do my solenoid tests, I can do it if I got squared away with all the hoops. If I didn't, no way. Okay? So, the whole thing comes down to getting the Allison certificates that are necessary, which are contained in the dongle if you're doing it offline. And at that point, you create your username, your password, your PIN number, and then you go ahead and get on with it. Now, you want to be careful here. I mean, it's going to work the same way with Chrysler. You can't do the same uh, mistake for too many times before they say, you're a hacker and I ain't letting you in. The PIN has to be 6 to 16 digits long. And if there are too many wrong attempts and you're using the dongle, the dongle is going to have to be reset. And that's a whole pain in the neck, let me tell you. So at that point, you have to set a new PIN and uh, a provision for the dongle. It's not going to work with what Allison calls a provision. And that's access to the computer is necessary for provisioning. So everything works one with the other. Thank you for watching. For all confirmed fix videos and unlimited technical support, become an ATSG member, your transmission tech solution. Click the membership link below.